Welcome to Ask Me Anything Part 2. Um, this is just a continuation of the first part that I posted. If you want to see more question and answers after this video, there is a first part which you can also watch here. And you can just click it and yep. Yeah, I'm gonna stop talking now so we can just move on to the question and answers. Do you consider yourself successful? If yes, what did you do to reach your success? I find that like success is relative, like it's different per person. It's definitely not the same for each and every person. So for, for me, I may be successful for myself, but for others, when they look at my life, they might not think I am successful because they have a different perception of what success looks like. To me, having success in life is basically just being happy with yourself, having good relationships with your family, your parents, your loved ones, your friends. So those are like the top two things that I would I have for success. But I also think success is reaching your ultimate goals in life and I would have to say that I am successful in some aspects of my life but not yet successful in other aspects of my life if that makes sense. If you had a time machine, go back in time and change something, relive a certain moment, what moment would it be? I want to relive the moments where Gab and I just started dating I don't know. I just I want to look I want to relive it. Just every single thing. I don't want to change anything about it. I just want to relive it. What do you miss the most here in the Philippines aside from your family? Definitely the food and how cheap everything is. This is one of my favorite questions. Which of your social media accounts, messaging apps contain the most secrets? I told her that I love the originality of this question. I'll be honest when I answer, but I'm also paranoid someone will try to hack me because it's happened. Someone tried to hack my Facebook and my Instagram and I don't know why. The one messaging app where I have majority of my secrets are probably in Facebook Messenger just because my friends and I use that the most. My friends Ali, Jillian, Bea, and I. That's where all our like gossiping and all the spilling of tea happens. It's gotta be Facebook Messenger. What camera do you use for your IG photos? I use my Fujifilm X-T20 and my iPhone sometimes. When I take selfies, I definitely just use my phone. What made you pursue to do vlogging? Um, I wanted to pursue vlogging because I felt like it was a totally different perspective of how my life is. The thing with vlogs is that it captures more of the moment than a blog post will and that's why I wanted to try YouTube. So how did I start? I don't know, I just started. <laughs> there is really no other, you don't have to really, I didn't really like think about it, I just sat down, started filming, and that's it. Will you visit Alaska? I want to, I just don't know when. How do you find inspiration when in a creative block, in vlogging or art or any in anything you do? If I have like a creative block, what I do is I look at online content that just inspires me to create. Usually what does the trick is if I'm on YouTube and I know that I need to create some kind of YouTube content and I don't know what to do, I watch a bunch of random YouTubers until inspiration strikes me or I just like go through my Instagram. I follow a lot of creative people People, so sometimes just seeing their content kind of rubs off on me and I'm like, yeah, I want to be doing something too. So I just push myself to do something creative. How is freelance work life like right now for you in New York? By the way, I always look forward to your post now that you're miles away from Manila. Hi, Steffi. My freelance life and work is pretty much the same as how it was in Manila, except I guess now it's just a little bit slower because I'm new in New York, so it's not like people know who I am or brands know that I'm here. I do get um, proposals here and there, some of them good, some of them not worth looking at, so I just, you know, I just decline. One thing that is very different from freelance life here and freelance life in the Philippines is that at least here, I know that I more or less get paid on time. Also, people are less cheap when it comes to rates. <laughs> What do you usually cook at home? Really curious about the recipes you make. Nowadays, I like we've been making the same food because we don't know what else to cook. Um, Gab and I get really boring with food nowadays just because we want things to be really quick and whatever. So I usually make either chicken teriyaki or teriyaki beef or Korean barbecue or my Korean noodles. We're really boring with food. How's your living in New York so far? So far it's been really great. I love it here. I have no complaints. What's the worst thing about living in New York so far? The worst thing? This is not New York specific, just East Coast specific. It's very cold at the moment. I don't like it. I don't mind cold, but this is like next level cold. We hit negatives 
daily and it just it sucks i don't really enjoy it but in new york specific i have nothing to complain about except maybe some things are very expensive do you miss going to blogger events here in the philippines uh not really even when i was in the philippines and going to events like i was very choosy with the events that i did go to and majority of the time i would go to events because i would go with my friends so mostly i just miss being able to go to events with my friends but not necessarily events in the philippines if that makes sense if you could have chosen to live in any other place aside from new york or paris where would you be right now i would be in london most likely did you change your last name to de leon in our marriage registration it is cami juan de leon but i am still gonna go with the name that you guys know of me which is cami juan I just want to know how you organize your time or life. My life is a mess. I badly need advice. I'm like the wrong person to ask. I'm not very good at managing my time. I like to procrastinate a lot. Like sometimes I'll wake up at like 9 but won't leave bed till 12. And then I do my daily, my daily chores like either doing the laundry, cleaning some dishes or cooking some food or doing the groceries. If I don't have to do any of that, I try to get some work done on my laptop and then I work from like while the sun is up and then once the sun starts to go down, then I get into my chores. I try to prioritize what I have to absolutely do that day and then I focus on that. What was one of your most defining moments in life? That is such a big question. I guess I would have to say was leaving the Philippines and moving here because to me that really felt like Okay, this is it. You're an adult now. Time to really grow up and be responsible, not just for yourself, but also for somebody else. Like, you know, because now Gab and I are married, we're like, you're not just responsible for yourself, but you're also kind of responsible for another person. Definitely, yeah, be leaving home, the comforts of home, and be being put in a totally different city where you barely know any people and just trying to survive from there. It's a pretty defining moment because I've learned a lot about myself since then. It has also helped kind of solidify what I want in life and kind of reassured me that I am in the right path in my life at this time of my life. What's the most exciting part of married life so far? Well, Gavin and I have been together for like six years and we did get married on our sixth year. So it, it does feel like Gavin and I know each other so much but we're still continually learning more about each other and i think the most exciting part about getting married to gab is reaching this whole other level of kind of love for each other that i never knew or never thought even existed because i already thought that we reached our peak now that we're married it's like a totally different world up here it's like a whole different level of love and understanding and it's just it's pretty awesome what are your thoughts about minimalism i definitely try to practice some form of minimalism in my life like less is more and the belief that the things you own shouldn't own you sometimes when i think about minimalism majority of the time i think about having a minimalist life in regards to material things and to me that is one of the things that i struggle with while i do definitely agree that the things i own shouldn't own me and they don't really it's kind of difficult to keep my life and material things at a very minimal state. What is your opinion about friends with benefits, arrangement, relationship, and how would you cope up with that if you actually had feelings for the guy? Okay, friends with benefits I think only really works if you really just see the guy as a friend. It's always so tricky because I feel like a lot of friends with benefits relationship type situations they don't always end up with both parties with it just being totally platonic so i think you have to be honest with him and tell him how you're feeling i don't think you should keep going with this relationship if it's not mutual like you have feelings for him but he doesn't i don't think you should continue on with this relationship just because you're just getting in too deep at this point if he doesn't feel the same way as you do then it's just not fair for either of you how do you handle your haters and advice to those who don't know how to deal with them the thing is with haters sometimes you'll have haters who make sense with what they say when they hate on you i've definitely had haters who have 
called me out once once or twice about something that I've said or done and then I try to just sit back and think okay maybe I'm I am too much of a bitch or maybe I shouldn't have said it this way or maybe I shouldn't have said this or that but other times there are haters who are just like unreasonably hateful when it comes to people like that I know that they probably have issues and I just try to understand where they're coming from or I just try to ignore the hate that they send my way especially when they start to talk about my life my decisions, how I handle my money just very trivial, not worth thinking about or being affected over then when I do get hate that more or less will make sense and I just I try to internal I try to understand also where they're coming from and I try to understand what they're trying to tell me try to take the criticisms and try to better myself so there are two different kinds of hate messages you just have to know which ones actually are trying to tell you something or the ones that are just trying to nitpick and try to bring you down and then those kind of messages you just yeah just Try to ignore that. If you could give your younger self one piece of advice, what would that be? You are not a seen emo girl and it is not a cute look. <laughs> also, you will eventually learn to love your flaws. Don't be so hard on yourself. It will get better. What is something that makes you happy every time you think about it? Oh, there's a, like a lot of things. Like when I think about the funny moments um, with my family, one of the happy memories I have um, with my family is like the time we spent New Year's Eve day playing Monopoly because I think somebody gifted someone in our family like a whole Monopoly game and all my siblings and I were playing and my mom was playing too in between playing and getting ready for New Year's Eve because we were gonna have a street party and it was like a big celebration so we had to you know do our part and prepare for that but we were like engrossed in the game it was the first time my younger siblings played Monopoly so they were learning a lot and it was it was starting to get funny because nobody was following the rules I remember we had my mom's laptop open Open and we were recording the game happening because it was just so funny and we wanted like to make memories out of it so we had the laptop open we were recording on her webcam and we were just like having fun and then next thing you know my dad comes up the stairs and is screaming like crazy at us he was like I'm the only one doing everything around this house blah, blah, blah. and then we were just like paused like literally everybody was paused while playing and we were just looking at him like uh he just went on and on until he was done talking and he left and then we were like we looked at we looked at the webcam because we were like oh my god we just got that on camera and then we all burst out laughing it was funny i don't know where that clip is now if my mom even still has it but it was a really funny time and it was one of the best memories because that monopoly game you guys lasted from new year's eve until the next day that's how long that game lasted it never ended because my, my siblings and I like when some of us would run out of money we would like borrow from the bank or sometimes we would borrow from another sibling and we're like can I loan like some like ten dollars from you because I need to pay him and sometimes we would like make all these side deals I remember my brother wanted to get all the train like the train stops and so he made a deal with me to trade his property for my train and I was just like yeah okay sure and it just it was a never ending because we made our own rules and it was just it was basically Monopoly but like Juan version it was just hilarious it was one of the best memories ever just wanted to ask if what one makes as a freelancer content creator is enough to survive in New York I would say no a lot of freelancers here still have a side job where they work somewhere that actually pays them minimum wage and the only reason I'm able to do my freelancing now is because Gab is able to work a job an actual job so both our incomes help us survive here but if it was just me I definitely would need another job aside from my freelance work I've never heard you speak Filipino can you say a few lines from Panatang Makabayan? uh yes I can but unfortunately I don't memorize it anymore because the last time I've recited Panata Mokobayan was like maybe in grade school. I'm ashamed, but that's just, I'm gonna be real. I don't memorize it anymore. And you have to have your right hand up because it's an, it's an oath. Panata Mokobayan, iniibig ko ang Pilipinas. Ito ang aking lupang sinilangan. Ito ang tahanan ng aking lahi. Ako'y kanyang kinupupkop at tinutulungan. Upang maging malakas, maligaya at kapaka, kapak, pakapik, kapak, kapak. At kapaki pakinabang. 
Bilang ganti, diring, diringin ko ang payo ng aking mga magulang. Susundin ko ang mga tuntunin ng aking paaralan. Tutuparin ko ang mga tungkulin ng isang mamayang makabayan at masunurin sa batas. Paglilingkuran ko ang aking bayan ng walang pag-iimbot at ng buong katapatan. Sisikapin ko maging isang tunay na Pilipino sa isip, sa salita at sa gawa. You guys, I know how to speak Filipino. It's just easier when it's in a when it's in a natural setting, when it just comes out naturally. And I think it's like that for any kind of language. I speak Filipino with a lot of my friends. A lot of my real life friends can attest to that. Especially like when I deliver jokes and whatever. I deliver a joke in Filipino and then I say charot and stuff. So yeah, it's easier when it's in a natural setting. I think a lot of us are guilty of not being able to speak proper Filipino anymore just because of how times have changed and how westernized the Philippines has gotten over the years and I am definitely guilty of that. How do you deal with toxic people on social media, especially on Twitter? Call out culture, bullying, blah blah blah. I mute those accounts. There are accounts who do it often, so what I do is just I mute them so I don't have to see their tweets on my timeline. I don't mind call out culture so much, but when when some accounts get nitpicky about the littlest things, I'm just like, uh, oh. then I just mute them, <laughs> whatever. Favorite designer brand. I don't have a favorite designer brand because I'm not really into designer clothes. I don't buy designer. However, one of my favorite designers where I really love their work is Ellie Sab. I want to know your hair care routine, please. Also, how do you wear your hair when you go to sleep? I don't really have a hair care routine. At the most, I just, you know, I have, I wash my hair with shampoo. I use Dove at the moment. I also use Suave coconut conditioner so that's it other than that i don't really use other products at the moment and when i go to sleep i just sleep with my hair like this i don't really tie it or whatever so yeah that's about it thank you guys for sending in your questions i had a lot of fun answering them even though there were a lot and i don't know how long this video is going to take i'm pretty sure it's going to take a while for me to edit because there were so many questions and i need to trim down my answers because a lot of the time i tend to drone on and on and on when i'm talking and then I forget that I'm just like, I'm too talkative sometimes. Thank you for sending in your questions. I hope you guys learned a thing or two. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button below. If you have any follow-up questions, leave them in the comments below. I will get back to you as soon as I can. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.